Let me read to you a passage from the sixth chapter of St. Mark's Gospel, verses 7 to 13. It's the Gospel for Thursday of the fourth week in ordinary time. St. Mark writes, Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave from there. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. That's from Mark chapter 6, verse 7 to 13. We are led to think of repentance. What do I mean? Well, it is traditionally thought that the Gospel of St. Mark is based on, and perhaps is a reproduction of, the preaching, teaching, and reminiscences of St. Peter. Let us assume that this is so, and imagine Simon Peter thinking back to that precious and fond time with the Lord during his public ministry. Our Gospel passage today tells us of how our Lord began to send them out on his behalf. He summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. They were to go out with what was necessary and nothing more, depending simply on Jesus and his word and, and direction. They were to be detached from personal considerations and to take what might come. The mission was all that mattered, and they were to conduct their mission together with Jesus in spirit and in his spirit. So they went off, and what did they preach? They preached repentance. We remember that John the Baptist preached repentance, and had a baptism symbolizing repentance and the forgiveness of sins. Not long after our Lord was baptized, he began his public ministry, by preaching repentance, for the kingdom of God was at hand. The twelve had the same message, message to announce. People were to be exhorted to turn away from sin, to be alive to the reality and, ev and evil of sin, and to prepare for its remission by God. God's rule was coming, a rule that would involve holiness of life in union with him. How it would come, and what precisely this would involve was not yet revealed. The one thing that would prevent the blessings of God being poured out on mankind and each person was sin. If sin were to be clung to, the Messiah's work would not attain its goal. All must repent. It is a message our gospel today directs towards each one of us. But now, there was among the twelve one whose path was a tremendous disappointment to Christ. I refer to Judas Iscariot, who is always mentioned in the Gospel at the end of the list of the twelve and is described as the betrayer. Jesus chose him to be one of the twelve, to be with him and to be sent out to preach. He was one of those to whom our Lord gave the name of Apostle, or his envoy, his ambassador. He was not just a disciple who followed and learnt, but an official envoy. He represented the Messiah, and in the future, he would have been one of the great foundation stones of the church, called to be a saint of God. He must have been a person of real promise for Christ made no mistakes in the matter of redemption of the world. In our passage today, he was one of those whom our Lord sent out in training and to prepare for his coming ahead of him. 
he was instructed in the message to be delivered. With the others, he drove out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Very significantly, he went off and preached repentance, but he himself failed to repent. Little by little, he allowed his sins to remain and indeed to grow. He stole from the common purse. He gradually refused faith in Jesus. At the synagogue of Capernaum, Christ announced his doctrine of the Eucharist, and as a result, he lost many of his disciples. On that occasion, our Lord said to the twelve that one of them was a devil. Judas was refusing faith. His heart was turning away from love of Jesus and acceptance of his teaching. If only he had repented. If only he had recognized his sins and turned to the master he was accompanying and sought his help in overcoming them. Christ could have made a saint of him. Judas preached repentance, but it was his lack of repentance that ruined him and opened him up to Satan. St. John tells us that at the Last Supper, Satan entered him and he went out into the night. He never came back into the light. Let us learn from his horrifying case that though we have been called to the constant company of Jesus, we must be vigilant against sin. We must recognize it and repent constantly of it. Let us pray to the Holy Spirit for the precious grace of true and constant repentance.